What's going on? My name is Trey. Welcome to What Could I Change? Today we're going to be talking about, you saw the title, I ain't hiding it, having a small penis. Will it affect your marriage? If you would like to subscribe after watching this video, please do. You want to help donate, you see the cash app. All right, let's get to it. So if I've personally had the experience many times of, you know, pining over a girl for weeks and then finally sleeping with her and her vagina was just blown to smithereens. It was just no good. I couldn't get any kind of enjoyment out of it. And to me, that's just like, you need to find that out before you actually go for it, you know? Okay. Well, if you're marrying a virgin, I mean, that kind of eliminates that entire... I think some with vaginas reveals. are just like inherently blown out. Like what? I think that they just, they just, come like that? Just, no, they just are that's... fucked up. Yeah, like some, that's just a genetic thing. That some, I like, oh all different, all <laughs> kinds of different size vaginas, just the same way that like, ladies, I'm sure you wouldn't want to marry some guy and then find out he had a two and a half inch penis, right? No. Oh. Point of information. Are you saying... <clears throat> you get with the man, he has two. You marry a man, he has two and a half inch penis. You gonna leave him? Is that what you're telling? Is that what you're saying to the people? Here's here's my take, and we'll watch just a tad bit more. If <laughs> you get with a man and he has a two and a half inch penis, and you don't know that by the time you're married, listen. <clears throat> I do think it is important to tell a woman that, not because of the sex. But it just needs to be made factual that you can still have sex. If your penis is too small to have sex, you should let your wife know that. That will affect the marriage. And to me, well, it's not just to me, but if you're incapable of having marital sex, and I know some people are going to be like, whoa, Trey, you go, you're out of line. I'm not. I say this all, all the time, you know, it's just like, if you're not able to have sex, then you shouldn't get married. I'm just being honest with you. I say it with my chest out. I said if you ain't, can't have sex, your penis is too small, well, then you just should not be married. Why? Because you cannot do the act that is meant for marriage. If your penis is just too small for that, I know. There's people who have micro penises. But I don't know how small is too small, to be honest with you. I don't. I've heard women say take, they could take two, three, four, five, six. Some women want to take 85 inches. I don't know. I said if it's too small to have sex. But very few men have penises too small. I know people, I don't know people, but I've seen that people with micro penises can't have sex. Now, what's my experiences with this, baby? Give me a second. See? Yeah, you have to see it first. There's no I think way. it yeah. depends on like your view of the person because if our, if our view of the person is what can they give me like in terms of immediate sexual gratification mm. as opposed to is this someone that I want to choose to love because I think love is a choice and someone that I would see raising a family with one day and I could be with together for life and then you figure out sex together and mm. you can keep optimizing your sex by loving each other more and more and more but ultimately it's a love is a choice I believe and it's one that is a gift of yourself and right. you receive the gift of the other person but if I had started to hang out with her and the first time that I saw her vagina it was a Venus flytrap it's just I want to know that before I get into like a serious relationship I think that's very valuable information like I think there are big vaginas there are big dicks there are small vaginas there are small dicks and realistically they need to be matched up <laughs> appropriately wait wait hold on all right <laughs> y'all go watch the rest of this over there on whatever podcast they actually have more interesting conversations to me than what we see a lot of these rare people do. At least we're talking about porn. At least we're, I mean, corn. God, I got to get used to doing that. At least we could talk about corn and we could talk about sex and we could talk about having a big penis. Now, I feel like these are more Venus fly trap. What are we talking? Are we talking about Audi? Okay. Just want to make sure I didn't miss something. I watched this clip earlier, but I couldn't remember what he said right there. So let's talk about it. <laughs> Let me give you that. Point of information. Okay. Am I telling you that I've had a small penis? Of course I am. <laughs> We're not here to fight that. I made a whole video on it five years ago. Right here. You can see it right here. Right here. Here's the video. Having a small penis. Made this five years ago. That's my ugly mug. Actually, looking kind of fresh. Oh. That's the reality of the fact. So... Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it, man. Um, I love being honest. Um, I love being honest. You heard the man. So let me talk about it five years later. I'm not, 
I don't know how much I weigh in that video. I know my body fat percentage is higher in that video than it is today. My body composition has changed a little bit because I've worked out so much since this day. Uh, a little bit more cardio, a little bit more running. Not a whole lot of, not much more running. I'm not a great runner. Terrible runner, actually. My wife can run for, I don't know anybody on this planet who runs. I remember, guys, let me say this before I continue. I remember one time I was running on the track. I was running about two miles. I was running so slow, there was a fat guy next to me walking and he passed me. That's how bad I am at jogging. I don't got the mechanics for it. I am the most world's worst runner, jogger, anything you can call it. My running is the same thing as a fat guy walking <laughs> and I am a fat guy myself. Okay, let's get to it. So like I said, my penis is just a little bit bigger than it was back then when I was making this video. Back then my penis was so small, I couldn't have sex, right? Uh, not possible. Um, not something I cared to do though. Um, once again, I did believe this, uh, for sex before I didn't want to have sex before marriage and I tried my best to do anything to get to there, but being a porn addict made it almost impossible. Um, in fact, the first time I, the first person I actually did have sex with like full on, um, I'm not trying to be vulgar here, but <clears throat> let's use the scientific term. The first time I ever actually penetrated a woman was my wife and that's it it's the only woman i've ever actually penetrated right um to the point of sex and to the point of climaxing right so before i i before i would try it but i couldn't get in enough to feel it um and so it was just more of a rubbing i know you're like what's going on here baby i'm just telling you the life of an obese man after I lost about 100 pounds, I was able to finally have sex, and that's how I had my son, obviously. Um, but yeah, I didn't have sex until after um, me and my wife were already together. Um, in fact, I didn't have sex until me and my wife were already married. Um, we got, I got married in, we got married three years ago, and then I think about two months, two, three months after that, we had our, she got pregnant, something like that. We found out she was pregnant. So anyway, yeah, man. Yeah, man. So I know what it feels like to really not have sex until then, but I would not have called myself a virgin simply because, because I was still doing sexual acts. I was still doing um, the oral sex, still doing, you know, the other stuff that comes with it. Pretty much trying to beat around the bush. So no, I would not say I was a virgin. Uh, I wanted to be, but porn just made it impossible for me because I just was so used to that fantasy um, <clears throat> but dealing with having a smaller penis, this is what I will say. I think the average penis size is five and a half, something like that. Five and a half, six inches. I will tell you this. I am not there. Okay. Um, my penis is big enough to have sex, um, but I'm still, I'm still fat. So I still have a couple inches I could get to. I think I, that would put me at roughly about seven. I think, I think, I don't know. Never been there. Been fat all my life. I didn't have sex until much later in my life because I was so fat. Okay. 400 pounds. You see them. Um, so I don't know, man. I really don't know. I guess it doesn't really matter um, because I'm able to do it. But at the same time, you know, my health is important. Now, the question at hand again. First of all, should you be a virgin before you have sex? And should you... um? If you're a man who was like me and couldn't have sex because your penis was too small, should you get married? If it's because of your weight, your penis isn't big enough to have sex, you need to get the weight off before you get into a marriage because that's unacceptable. You cannot get into a marriage with a woman and expect her to have a sexless life because you're too fat. You need to lose weight. You need to lose weight. That's what I did. That's what you need to do before you get married. Okay. Second, if you if you if your man just is in shape. He looks good, but his penis is two and a half inches. If that's enough for you, get in there. But I don't think it should be to where, because because the question doesn't make sense. If you're a virgin and he's a virgin, and you get in a marriage and he has a two and a half inch penis, well then what does it matter? You're, it's not like you've had penis before. It's not like you've had sex before. So it's not like you're going to be ready to be rotted with seven, eight, nine inches. It's just not how it happens, right? Any woman who could tell you her first time of sex is normally painful. Because they're not used to that. So I don't see why it would really matter what the size of his thing was. As long as they were able to have sex and y'all were able to commence it with, you know what, the process that you can have a baby with, then there's no point of that. Now, 
And the guy's saying that if your vagina is blown out, right? Which he said that's genetic. I don't know if he's being trolling, but I, I would beg to differ. I've never heard of that before. Uh, but let's say you get what a woman and her thing is blown out. If she's a virgin, that won't be an issue. Now, let's talk about not being a virgin. You go into a marriage. This is where you're going to have to get the porn side. Oh, dang it. You got to get the corn mindset out of your head. You got to get what society tells us sex is out of your head. Because if you're thinking about getting rotted all night, you listen to all these rap songs and listen to all these uh, pop artists talking about how deep you can go and all that kind of stuff. Well, yeah, yeah, you're going to be confused. And if you've had sex with men who have eight inch, nine inches penises, yeah, you're just going to be corrupted. You know, that's not, say, not saying that men who have that size penis are bad people. What I'm simply saying is that if you base your sex off of how pleasurable it's going to be and it has to be eight, it has to be nine inches, that's going to suck for you because the only way you'll ever be able to get married is to see your husband naked. You have to see his penis, right? That's a problem. And that's what this sex filled world will teach us. It will teach us about sex being less about just intimacy and being more about, I got to get my back blown out. I got to have the best sex on earth. And I am telling you, if, if, if you're married, you'll hear me. Sex is not going to do it. <laughs> Guys, I am telling you. And for my men, too, if you get with a woman whose vagina isn't as tight because you've had girls who were tighter back in the day, I promise you. The best sex in the world, and the best sex in the world sounds so worldly and disgusting, really, because it shouldn't sound, it shouldn't be comparable to other people's relationships. But let's say for the sake of argument, you want to have that with me. If you want to have that point of information, let's say the sex is the best you've ever had. Your marriage will still crumble and fall apart if you cannot figure out anything past sex. I, I said. Nick, Nick, I said, look to your neighbor and say the best. I'm just kidding. But the best sex you can ever have, to be honest with you, will not sustain a marriage. Right. I'm going to tell you this right now. You you would more like you would have a better chance of staying with your wife or, or your husband if the sex was decent than if the sex was great. But the relationship is terrible. If the relationship is great, but the sex is, eh, eh, you know, and once again, you're that means you're comparing it to something. But let's say it's not like. Every time you get in there, you're, you're bursting, right? Let's say it's not the best sex you've ever had for the first year of your marriage. Your relationship will do much better if you're focusing on other stuff outside of something that once it's done, you got to go get a towel and clean up. Let's be honest, baby. Let, I mean, let's just have the conversation. Sex, the aftermath of sex without the intimacy part is not nice. It's just go grab a towel, clean yourself up, baby. It's grab a towel, clean yourself up, baby. Okay, and if you're doing it for the love and the intimacy when you finish, guess what that means? Grab a towel and clean up, baby, because it's going to get hot and sweaty. You're going to have to take a shower right now. You might have to air freshen up the room. I'm just letting you know it gets hot and heavy. My point is, guys, that sex is an amazing thing. But at the aftermath of sex and all that will make you realize that it cannot sustain a relationship. It is a beautiful thing when the relationship is going well. But if you think sex can fix a relationship, you're goofy. <laughs> you're absolutely goofy. Sex is part of the relationship. It's not sex and then the relationship. So all these people who say I couldn't get with somebody unless I had sex with the first, you're goofing. You're goofing. Your relationships are probably already going to die. You'll be divorced within five. I'll give you five. Because we can never base something that has been so pornified and something that God intended to be great between two people who love each other and sacrifice their lives for each other to make it into such a pleasurable thing. I just want to get my rocks off. And sometimes, I'm not going to lie to you, sometimes the, we all have needs. I get that. But anybody who bases the relationship and even thinks that, oh man, sex is going to be able to save it, you're crazy. <laughs> sex is not as important. This, see, and the people who talk about sex that way, who talk about, man, she's got to have a, he's got to have a big, Big penis. Oh, he's got to, she's got to have a tight vagina. She's got to be able to ride it, cowboy. Are not married. <laughs> Normally aren't married because marriage is just so much more than that, man. There's so much that goes on during marriage. The ups and the downs, right? The, the people lose stuff in their life. People have miscarriages. People have, they lose their children. People have deaths. It's just, 
there's there's good times there's crying there's laughing there's trying to figure this all out there's just so much to marriage just cleaning the house washing the dishes doing the laundry going back and forth having cars break down trying to pay the bills there is so much more to marriage than just oh the sex sucks so hmm. i guess it is what it is i guess i'll go divorce my wife and go see if i can find a bigger one your marriage will die right if, the, if, if sex was the only thing that <laughs> could maintain a marriage, then porn stars apparently would have the best marriages, would have the best marriages, right? Porn stars don't get married and stay together at a high rate. <laughs> they don't. So let's not be goofy. All right, y'all, y'all heard my point. So if you got a small penis, brother, and you can't have sex, don't get married, lose that weight. If you got a micro penis and it's just way too small, which I said, once again, I haven't heard of it being too small, but let's say your penis is less than an inch. I've never heard of it that small, but if it's less than an inch, you can't have sex. I mean, hey man, you, like I said, you wouldn't be able to do in, um, now this is coming from my background. But you can't, um, I'm not, I can't, I can't think of the word right now. I hate when that happens, but you can't, what would be a, a simple word to say? You can't complete the marriage in the sacrifice, this, uh, the sacrificial, how do I say this with it being normal? You can't complete the marriage pretty much without having sex, right? You can't complete that sacrificial marital act without being able to have sex. So if you cannot literally have sex, you may have to make the sacrifice and be celibate. And people do it. It's not the end of the world if you don't have sex, man. It's just not. It's not the end of the world if you don't have sex, you don't get married. There's plenty of people who never get married, who are celibate and live their life for God. And that's all they do. And you can do the same. Um, and, you know, we all get dealt cards in this life. And it sometimes sucks. People have disabilities. Other people have stuff, too. So, you get dealt the cards, you get dealt, man. But at, remember this, though. I want to be positive. At the end of the day, marriage is great, but life is not all about marriage either. Marriage is to teach us more and more and more about God and building a family. At the end of the day, when we all get laid down in our grave, I promise you there's so much more than just marriage. There's also God. There's also God. And once you learn that, the greatest love story ever told. Man, that sounds like a preacher, man. I hate saying that. <laughs> I hate saying that. The greatest love story ever told. It sounds it sounds so watered down, but I'm just trying to make it simple for the sake of the video. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Y'all know. I'm gone. Peace.